see that game focus on manufacturing, but specifically reducing the, the amount of defective products in the manufacturing process. The goal of this year's game is a combination of different things. You score based on a high six sigma value, or a high sigma value, I guess you would say, compared to the number of products you've actually produced, and that will actually give you your score. I can give you a quick run through um, what the robot is really expected to do, and you can figure out what you're going to do, and I'm going to do that later. In the middle of the field, this is the OEM pool. It contains gadgets. There are three different colors of golf balls here, white, yellow, and black. On these pilots here, these are gizmos, these Easter eggs. These, well actually I guess we kept these all the same color to keep, keep some confusion. Some of these are magnetic, some are not. On game day, you're going to be told at the beginning of your round which ones you need to get and which ones are defective. To start out, your robot, let's say you're red, robot will be right here. Your driver, or in this year's uh, competition, it's called the Robotics Control Engine, will be right here. Your spotter, this year called the Process Engineer, will be standing in the middle of the field right here. Awesome. Your robot is expected, depending on your strategy, to grab this, this is the mobile recall trailer. This is for you to use to recall defective products. This little dock with the recall docking station right here. When this happens on game day, this light will light up to tell both you, both the process engineer, uh, anyone might have just called the spotter and driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell the spotter and the driver that it's docked. When it's docked, this allows the process engineer, spotter, if they want to, to remove this float control valve. When that happens, Inside this, there are going to be six gadgets, two from each color. This ensures that you have to at least deal with one or two defective gadgets. And the goal is for your robot to come over here, get these gadgets, bring them into the gadget sorting area. Dump them here. This allows the spotter to pick them up and sort them as they see fit. If they're good gadgets, they can pack them if they want to. If they're defective, they can place them into the mobile recall trailer, and then the robot needs to take this sometime before the end of the game and place it into the recall center. Otherwise, they're going to count against your score. Now, the fun part is, process engineer, once, once you have docked this at least once, and have a good or you're going to be having, but so long as it's docked, the spotter can take as many of these as they want, Placing this too to put into play. Sorry. Now, you can grab 150 of each color, so you should have plenty to deal with. Your robot can take as many as your robot can handle and put into this area to sort. That's only one part of the game. Wow. The next part are the gizmos. These are fun. At the beginning of your round, you will find out which ones are defective, and your robot has to determine whether or not each one of these is magnetic or not. There are pretty much split half and half, certainly not remembering, I believe there are 10 non-magnetic and 11 magnetic, or might have the reverse, but I'll double check that later. So basically, your robot has to grab these and put inside a gizmo package. This is the gizmo package. So the robot has to place the gizmo package right here in one of these three holes. That is actually worth 50 points. Oh my gosh, so that can't be anything else worse, so that's kind of irrelevant at this point. I'm going to have to make something uh, with If you can, if your robot is capable, so place these gizmos, hopefully you've got non-defective gizmos, place these in here. You can fit as many as you want in here as you can. And they're worth 10 points each, so long as they're in this package and in the gad uh, gizmo packing, packing ship center. Sorry, i got to get all the terminology right. Now, if you want them to be worth a little bit more, you can grab the top of the package and seal it. This flying disc has to be placed on the cone where it's completely covered. So you can't see any of the sheets below it. If you do that, then every non-defective gizmo within that package is worth 20 points. So it works out pretty well. However, any defective gizmos, either in this package or anywhere else on the production floor, will count against your score. They're defective, and that's you're trying to, trying to reduce that. So if you knock one over out of its spot, so long as 
they are still on the Gizmo palette, they don't count against your score. And if one falls out, <laughs> if they fall out of the floor, then they're considered factory waste or otherwise considered to be defective. So, something you need to check for. And, I believe that's the general guideline behind the game. General? Oh, yeah! Well, I think you can reach over that and I can just push on it. I missed that at the beginning. <laughs> but, I'm not even okay. <laughs> Alright, here's the fun part. Alright. I told you that you're going to find out at the beginning of your round. Which of these is effective and which are non effective? Here's the tricky part. It's going to be different for every team. It is going to change every round. So, if you see another team member picking up a different color or something like that, that means nothing. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're going for. You have two ways to find out which units are defective. One, a minute and a half into the game, there are some LEDs on the uh, Gadget scanning tube support. These will line up with a code to tell you what's effective. You'll have to know how to read that code. Otherwise, if you want to find out before a minute and a half which ones are defective, your robot can interface with this port right here. This is going to be live, but you also you make sure you read your rules on how it's going to interface with this and not cause any damage. We're going to have one ground, three wires, power, I mean, or signal. When you read that, I can't tell you exactly how to do it because that's one of the uh, challenges for this year, but that'll send a signal back to your robot. Your robot can, then, based on whatever programming you have, determine which gadgets, which gadgets are defective, which gizmos are defective. So you have that option. Now, just because the interface with this does not mean that this is going to stay lit, so your, your robot needs to know how to read that signal. But that's the fun part. Am I missing anything? Okay, here's another fun piece. Your score will not matter until the end of each run. Each, each round is considered a production shift. But your score throughout all of each round, so like you have the seating round, which this year is going to be considered the pilot production, the semi-final, which is the low rate of production, I believe, uh, I'm missing a word on that somewhere, and the finals, which are the, uh, actually I can't remember what that's called. <laughs> anyway. Seating, semi-finals, and finals. At the end of the seating rounds, that's when your score is actually going to be finally calculated. It's going to be based on the number of defective gadgets that you have collected, divided by the number of total gadgets that you have entered into the manufacturing process, times one billion. That, there's actually in the rules, we were on you, make sure you read the rules thoroughly. There's a table with, the, with uh, values for the signal value between 6 and 0 0.1 in increments of 1 tenth. So based on that table, your score will be rounded to the next value in that table. So that's when you get that value. <coughs> that value is going to be multiplied by various things throughout the game to get your total score. So again, the higher your signal, the better. I think that generally covers it, but don't take my word for anything I've said. Make sure you read the rules multiple times because they have been changing, and the Q&A is already full of questions. It's going to grow. So if you have any concerns,